Salutations, respected viewers. In this video, I wish to say farewell, Lord Ashdown. So, um, who was Lord Ashdown? He was leader of the Liberal Democrats for quite some years, and he has now been called to his reward. Just found out that he died today, only two months ago, he was diagnosed with bladder cancer. Obviously advanced quite rapidly. And indeed, he's someone I can say I've met. I went to two talks by him, and I spoke to him. So yeah, I met him. The first famous politician I ever saw, because it was 1991 or so, getting off a plane at Aberdeen Airport, and I happened to see him with his assistants going to some by-election. So uh, he was born in um, Delhi in 1941 to Irish parents. He was the progeny of a mixed marriage, as we call it in Ireland, as in one of his parents was a Protestant and one of them was a Catholic. I think he was Protestant on his father's side. And he partly grew up in, in County Down. So he went to um, a school in Bedford, that's in England. And because he's Irish, he's known as Paddy Ashdown. His name was actually, wasn't it, Jeremy John Durham Ashdown. But just from that time on, from his adolescence on, always known as Paddy. So he joined the Royal Marines, became an officer. Um, he married very young, like at 19. There's some 60s documentary in which he's shown. He served in Northern Ireland in the early years of the Troubles. Um, so, uh, yes, he said he was Irish, and he actually said that in the speech that I went to, although people in Ireland were usually not aware of that. But um, saw no contradiction between that and being British as well. Um, and uh, he was a Labour Party member in the, in the early days. Um, and then he left the Royal Marines after quite a few years. He went to the University of Hong Kong, age 30, learned Chinese. And I think he was in the Foreign Office, the Intelligence Services, and so on in the 70s. So he joined the Liberal Party in the late 70s, and the Liberal Party was in the doldrums. It was uh, the nadir of the party because of the uh, Rinkergate affair. That's the leader, Jeremy Thorpe, uh, has had a homosexual relationship with Norman Scott, also known as Norman Joseph. I won't go into that whole sordid tale. And then got fed up with Norman Scott telling all and sundry about this liaison. So Thorpe allegedly hired Andrew Newton to shoot dead. Uh, Norman Scott, but he didn't shoot dead Norman Scott, he shot dead his dog, Rinker, and it all came out in the wash, and it went down very badly on the doorstep. There was a lot of anti-gay prejudices at the time, and even apart from that, hiring a hitman, okay, maybe he did that, but some, it didn't do that, but something fishy was going on. So the Liberals had a pretty abysmal time in the late 70s, and 1979, Ashdown first stood for the Liberal Party, um, and it was brave to take the side of David against Goliath, a man of his gifts, if he joined the Conservatives or Labour, he could have gone far. But he joined a party which was possibly moribund at the time. Failed to be elect elected for Yeovil in 1979, elected in 1983. It was supposed to be a bumper year. By that time, it was the SDP Liberal Alliance. The faction had split off the Labour Party in 1981, called themselves the Social Democratic Party. And they formed an alliance of the Liberal Party. So there were two parties working together. The SDP Liberal Alliance, what a mouthful. They were often just called it the Alliance. Anyway, um, for a while, it looked like they might actually win the election. They were ahead in the polls a few months before. They fell behind the Conservatives and were just behind Labour. So by a whisker, you know, two percentage points behind Labour, but they took far, far fewer seats. 27 seats to Labour's 209. But he was elected in Yeovil. So southwestern England was the only uh, strong area for the Liberals. And he was an early day Europhile. The European Economic Community was still a relatively new thing for the United Kingdom. But he was an ardent believer in European integration. When I saw him address the Oxford Union, he said he was a Federalist. What's wrong with that? Now, I respect his position. It's a consistent position. Also, he's candid about it. But there's so, there's so many closet Federalists who, who won't uh, tell the truth about what they actually believe and want. Perhaps it's odd to be a Europhile in southwest England, which had its uh, fishing industry almost wiped out by uh, the common fisheries policy. But Ashdown, he was uh, charismatic, he was affable, uh, he was an effectual orator. And um, so 1988, the uh, Liberals and the Social Democratic Party merged. Uh, they couldn't call themselves the Social Liberal Democrats, that'd be, uh, or the Liberal Social Democrats, that'd be LSD. They're briefly the Salads, the Social and Liberal Democrats, and said, come on, come on, sort it out, we'll just be Liberal Democrats. So he led them into the 1992 election with that name against John Major, and Labour and the Conservatives were neck and neck until on a stage in Sheffield, Neil Kinnock, the leader of the opposition, made a complete tit of himself and single-handedly handed the election to the Conservatives. Up until that point, it looked like a Lib Lab coalition. Neither party dared criticise Ashdown. They thought they need the Liberal Democrats as coalition partners. Um, it had come to light a few months beforehand that he'd had an extramarital relationship with his secretary. But that was several years before and had only just um, 
been publicised and he was praised on all sides for handling it with aplomb and being uh, truthful from the first moment. It was several years ago. His wife still wanted to be with him. That was that. Having wed at the age of um, 19, I suppose uh, he thought life had passed him by. Um, so then he led the Liberal Democrats fairly effectively against John Major's government and Major's government's uh, popularity was soon, um, you know, down in the gutter and they lost by-election after by-election. The Liberal Democrats had six constituencies that won a further six. And this was the time of the breakup of Yugoslavia. Uh, and uh, Ashdown took the liveliest interest in the uh, dissolution of Yugoslavia. Uh, and he was um, a real warmonger, adamant for the United Kingdom to get stuck in. That there was no advantage for it in the United Kingdom. There's no British interest, or interest that was threatened. It was out of sheer humanitarianism, I suppose. Though oddly, he didn't extend that attitude to Iraq later. So he thought that British soldiers should get killed for Bosnian independence, but should never even vote for their own independence. It's staggering, um, because uh, he was um, such a Europhile. Now, there's some good things about the European Union and all that, but um, don't say that the UK shouldn't care about its own independence a bit. I know independence can be overrated. It can be good not to be independent. Um, but uh, then say that the United Kingdom must fight for a country which most people have never heard of. So uh, the odd thing is, that the his party's share of the vote fell in 92 and fell in 97, and yet he's hailed as a triumph because they gained in seats. And I pointed this out to him when he spoke at the Oxford Union, and he said, we count at seats, not votes. So they went up from 20 constituencies in 1992 to 46 in uh, 1997. So it was a tremendous success for them. They were it just burst out of southwest England. One area that Liberal Democrats hadn't won for 70 years. Um, thought they really could be the party of government. There were times when people thought they would come ahead of the um, Conservative and Unionist Party. So he uh, acknowledged that he and Blair agreed about a lot. And he was writing diaries at this time. And as he indelicately put it, uh, the relationship between uh, the Liberal Democrats and Labour should be possibly casual sex, possibly a lengthy affair, and possibly marriage. As in, the first would be cooperating on certain issues, the second would be a coalition, and the third would be an actual merger. So Blair formed a constitutional committee shortly after he came to office and included the Liberal Democrats. Uh, and that was that. They had a very good uh, relationship. However, they became increasingly, became increasingly disillusioned with Blair and kept attacking him from the left saying the things that uh, Labour didn't have the conscience to say. But some Labour tribalists said, no, uh, 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 we fight Liberal Democrats. Our struggle against them is red in tooth and claw. We're not merging with them. So it didn't happen. Blair apparently uh, toyed with the idea of a coalition, despite absolutely not needing one, having a majority of 180. And to balance this, he thought he'd make a sop to the far left of his party by bringing Livingston into cabinet. And he said to Livingston, how do you think we've got on as a government? And Livingston said, far worse than I'd anticipated. And um, that depth charged the idea right from the get-go. So there was no big tent, including the Liberal Democrats. Um, the proportion of representation, a referendum on that was in the Labour's manifesto. They didn't hold it. They wasted Lord Jenkins' time, former leader of the Social Democratic Party, producing a report on an alternative vote plus, which was never implemented, didn't see the light of day. Well, not till the unsuccessful 2011 referendum. So in 1999, uh, Ashton stood down after 11 years as leader of his party. He was soon ennobled as Lord Ashdown and went around evangelising for his party. He was a man who was seen to be in the best of health, so it's, um, it's a pity that he's been called to his reward. It was not a particularly old age of 77, and uh, he was a, some UN representative in Bosnia. So that's Paddy Ashdown, and um, he contributed much to the gaiety of the nation. He was a man whose opinions, I don't doubt, were sincerely held, uh, and he had some integrity, so he shall be missed. <laughs>